another supplement, so spermidine, is also I also I, I think is is a great supplement, and uh, you are actually the you're a scientific advisor to Spermidine Life, which I found was interesting. So, can I could you talk a little bit about uh, how you got introduced to Spermidine and and what you see Spermidine what do you see as the good points of Spermidine? I actually found found out about Spermidine um, through research many years ago and. Again, it was sort of researching the cell. Mm. And when we look at a piece of aging, this whole, as and a lot of your listeners are familiar with this whole concept of what we call autophagy. And autophagy is getting rid of damaged cells. And we have to get rid of damaged cells to heal and recover. As we age, we get more and more and more and more damaged cells, or what we call senescent cells. Senescent cells are cells that are designed, they're basically, the cells age, they start getting filled more and more and more with trash and damage. And at some point, they're designed to kill themselves, recycle the good parts and get rid of the bad parts and go away. They don't, they stick around. I like to call them the zombie cells because they actually spew out proteins and they actually damage the cells around them. So senescent cells will create more senescent cells, will create more senescent cells. So part of Longevity is getting rid of the damage. And spermidine is an autophagy inducing agent. Fasting is as well. So, spermidine is a fasting mimetic in that it actually gets rid of these damaged cells. It particularly, it seems to work well with mitochondrial. So, my, you get what's called mitophagy, you get rid of damaged mitochondria. So, spermidine, if we talk about that whole mitochondrial biogenesis, right? I, I, I want to make new mitochondria, but I got to get rid of the old guys. The, the sick old guys are not doing any good. They're taking up space. They're utilizing research, resources. So I got to get rid of them. So spermidine is a really nice option for that. It has its best benefit for autophagy by using a high dose. So I like to do a high dose periodically. Like let's say four times a year, you do a high dose, like six milligrams for 30 days. And then you can use a maintenance dose just on a regular ongoing basis, which has more of a just keeping things level, but not a big sort of die off. So it's kind of like cleaning house. Every now and then you got to clean out everything, right? Just clean out, spring clean, and then you got to keep everything okay. But even if you're keeping everything okay, eventually you got to go back and spring clean. So that's sort of the concept of using spermidine at a high dose periodically and a lower maintenance dose. So it's a, you know, you talk about the peptides and everything being, you know, they're, they're sort of rebuild. You got to get rid of damage. And that's why I really like spermidine. So when you're doing this high dose period, do you uh, combine it with fasting or, or perhaps lower calories? Interestingly, when they did a study on fasting in mice, if they blocked spermidine. So we all make spermidine. It's a polyamine. polyamine. We get it in our diets. We just get in low amounts. We don't get a lot of it. And then our liver makes them. So, so we, we do have spermidine in it. If they took mice and they had no spermidine, so they blocked all their spermidine and they did fasting, there was no autophagy. There was no beneficial effects. So spermidine appears to be a critical piece of making fasting really work for autophagy. So indeed, you should do it if you're going to fast, I'm becoming a little bit less enamored with fasting a bit. I know it has some very significant benefits, but I think it has potentially some detriments as well. I think, you know, there's, there's, uh, there's a lot to discuss there, the whole podcast in and of itself, um, because we see you know, a lot of people are doing now so much fasting or time-restricted eating. I'll say people do less fasting, more time-restricted eating, eating in a small window. And we're now seeing people becoming more and more protein deficient. They're trying to get adequate amount of protein in. Remember, guys, adequate protein is a gram of protein for pound of body weight. So for me, it weighs 135 pounds, it's 135 grams of protein. I eat more than that because I'm muscle build. I do a lot of weightlifting. So, so those of you who weigh 170 pounds, you need 170 grams of protein. That's a lot. And to try and do that in a three-hour window is nearly impossible. Mm -hmm. And in fact, know that loading protein best works in the morning and probably evening times, and then having a smaller amount at lunch. So I'm being a little bit less enamored with fasting as I see people go into this kind of constant time-restricted eating modes. I think if you do it, you need to cycle on and off of it. And if you are doing it, doing it with spermidine is going to accentuate the benefits quite dramatically. Mm -hmm. And maybe 
you, if you didn't have enough polyamines in you, then maybe it's going to be essential to that piece. Can you use spermidine and other fasting mimetics like rapamycin, mm. which is a drug that you use once a week? You use those instead of fasting? I think maybe. Um, so I think there's a lot we still have to learn. Everybody jumped onto the fasting time restricted eating bandwagon. And like everything, now we're starting to look at mm, is that the right choice? Especially, I think maybe when you're younger, as you're older and trying to maintain muscle, and I'm a big, you've got to maintain muscle, mm. uh, I think it may be doing some detriment to some people. Right. So I like the spermidine option and rapamycin options as as other ways to act as fasting mimetics. So just one last thing on the autophagy. So if you're, again, if you're on this kind of six milligrams, uh, would that impact your ability to build muscle? So would it mean that you shouldn't be like working hard in the gym at, the, at that time? In so there's that, always that, that, balance, right? Between what we call mTOR, which is muscle building, get strong, and AMPK, which is longevity, but not so much get strong. So if we turn off mTOR, we don't build muscle. And that's one of the reasons drugs like metformin, which are, you know, was a great longevity agent, but they're now they're finding mm, maybe it impedes muscle building because it's such it's so mTOR inhibiting. Permanent interestingly works on some different mechanisms. And so it actually does not inhibit mTOR in the same way that some other of the longevity agents do. So, it's, it, so I don't see the muscle loss when, when you're doing that. That said, I do have people go through phases where I'll have them maybe protein restrict a little bit more and go through a little bit more of an autophagy phase where they are just eating a little bit less protein uh, and maybe taking agents, agents like hydospermidine or quercetin and phytotin and, you know, and, and doing that for a brief period and then going back into a muscle building mode. So mm -hmm. I think that there is, you're, you're always trying to weigh that balance of mTOR AMPK, bring mTOR up a little bit, make muscle, and then maybe bring it back down a little bit. So I do think there's kind of a cycle to even your eating habits, to kind of cycle really high protein and maybe backing off a little bit and really high protein. And during those higher protein phases, really working on muscle building and those lower protein phases, maybe backing off a little bit. I do think there's some advantages to that cycling behavior in terms of longevity and maintaining muscle mass. Right. So one other thing that spermidine does, I believe, is it also does immune. It, it also supports the immune system. So it it up because we talked about the importance of the immune right. system before, immune system. We, yeah. which I absolutely agree. So uh, could you talk a little bit about how it helps there? That's huge and. Whenever I look at, for instance, a white blood, a complete blood count on people, I always look at a couple of things. I look at, at the neutrophil to lymphocyte ratio and, and you'll see people as they age, lymphocytes, those are our cells that make antibodies. Those are the cells that are your surveillance against cancer. As we age, that lymphocyte count starts going down. So you'll see less lymphocytes. So people don't look at that but they, they'll see their white count looks normal and they'll see every, everything's marked as normal. But what you'll start to see is neutrophils go up, lymphocytes go down. If I'm young and healthy, those ratios, that's a 50-50 ratio. But then you start to see this. So if I look at an 80-year-old, their lymphocytes are really low, their neutrophils are high. So we've got to keep lymphocytic function up. Remember, those are the guys who are going to make antibodies to, to a, a virus that you get. Those are the guys that if there's a cancer cell, they're, they're going to be the first line of defense you have to make natural killer cells and get rid of the cancer cells. So that decline in lymphocytic function is paramount to aging. And one of the things spermidine does is it stimulates that immune function. So you actually get an improvement in lymphocyte, both count and function. They've shown that, that when they give uh, a vaccine, if they give spermidine along with it, there's a much better antibody response to the vaccine. So the, uh, the, Spermity appears to really modulate, but not overstimulate immune response, which is really nice. It's an immune modulating agent, not immune stimulating so much as immune modulating, which is exactly what you want. If I overstimulate the immune system, then I create autoimmune disease, right? If my, my immune system is going haywire, it not only attacks every virus, but it starts attacking my liver and my thyroid, and you know, we get autoimmune disease.